Well hello there, Just Willow again and back to station as usual. So today the big job, the big big job we've got to do is sort out the power networks. We need to get this all kind of bit more, well, seriously better than just running off a tiny little battery. So first job I think is to get the solar panels down. Now I've got a funny feeling, yes I have, I have built a couple of solar panels from the previous day. So it'll be a case of getting these down and we've got the sensor which I'm going to pinch from the lander. I'm not going to bother with using it for the air pressure and stuff because realistically power is more important at this point. So we've got to now try and work out where on earth we're going to put this. Now the shadows from the terrain will interact with the solar panels. Basically the game is actually quite good at working out shadows and things like that. So we do have to go up a little bit higher. My temptation is to bring it up maybe up here on top of this ridge. So bringing the frames up a little bit and then having it possibly one too high. The solar panel you cannot just place on anything in this game, it has to be the frames. So this is going to be the tricky point. We can't also place it onto the walls. We have got the wall packs here, but these you can't build onto basically. It has to be the foundations. Uh, now, question, ah, I do have some iron frames. So We've got to get a bit higher. Now we're going to put quite a thick wall at the back here, which is not the end of the world. It can be quite handy. So what I've got to do is just bring this up now. And I'm thinking maybe two blocks high. Get it nice and high. That way then it can be also a wall for what could be eventually the greenhouse. Now the temptation is to maybe not worry too much about having it as a greenhouse um, there's reasons for that later on which we'll go over later when we get to that stage but suffice to say it's probably not a good idea to do that now I need to weld this up at least one step because otherwise I can't simply build to it so let me just grab my welder I'm going to go whiz through and just weld these all up to one stage well basically to the scaffolding so there's the scaffolding now up now let's get these solar panels on now we've got choice of design, which way we want to go with this. You have the dual ports or the single ports. So the dual port splits the data out from the power network. That could be handy. Or you've got simple single port where data and power is on one network. That can minimize the amount of cable we have to deal with and that might be a good idea to start off with. But if you want to get into more exotic stuff, you really want dual one. But I think for this project, I'm just going to stick with single, as it's going to be the easiest way of dealing with it. Alright, let's just get these down. And then we've just got to put some glass on, which I bet you haven't got me. I also need to put in the APC. So that's going to go here, I think. Yes, so the power coming out of this network it needs to be split off. We also need to take some of the power to power the chips to control the solar panels. So the solar panels will need some sort of reliable power source. If the power does go out for the chips, then we're kind of hosed. So that is another thing we've got to deal with. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab together the glass, uh, which should be hopefully some still in here. I don't think we used it all up. Here we go, got some glass. I'm not going to worry about, as I say, making a box because we're on the moon. If you play other scenarios, you will have to worry about weather. And these basic, or I say basic, the standard solar panels now get damaged by storms, which is a little bit frustrating. Um, so you do have to kind of deal with it. There is a technique you can do where basically you build a glass box around them and that will protect them from the storms and it can be cheaper than building the heavy solar panels. But then you have to take all the atmosphere out of that box otherwise it ends up heating up slowly and it'll get to a point where it gets so hot that it then basically just set fire to the solar panels so which is not ideal at all really so another thing you got to deal with again lots of little complications in this game the sensor is probably not necessary to be on an east-west face now i honestly can't remember there is a solar angle in the script now uh, where basically from here we'll get what is effectively just solar angle that's all we need to read basically 
that's going to be the same as vertical for us. And all that does is basically tell us how far over the sun is. Uh, all we need to do is read that and batch write it to all of these. So it's fairly simple now. There used to be some mathematics and stuff, and if you look at the wiki, it has got references to that, but that is now completely not necessary. You just simply need a reader and a batch writer. Now, the question is, where do you get the batch read and writer from? So the batch read and writer, annoyingly, is actually um, an extra item we're going to have to build. So if I go over to the electronics printer, uh, which one do I want? That one. So we're looking for the Logic I.O. chips. They're quite cheap, just one gold, one copper each. And we're going to need two of these. One for the reader and one for the batch writer. So I'm going to quickly just chuck those together. And I'm also going to print off a load more cable because we've only got this amount of cable left plus what's on my tool belt. And there's only 16. So that's going to not be enough now. I might actually do it with heavy gauge cable, but let's see. Do we have enough resources? Mm, yeah, let's go for heavy gauge. So the reason I'm going for heavy gauge is so that it's kind of future proof a little bit. It's not really necessary at stage, but it will just mean I won't have to rip out the smaller cable later on. And the heavy gauge is a heck of a lot better at dealing with the power requirements. Well, not in power requirements, just basically the cable uh, wattage of the network. I have this sneaking feeling every time I play this game that I swear it used to be like one kilowatt. It might have been like years ago. Again, I always had it in my head that it was one kilowatt for the standard cable and the thick cable was 10 kilowatts. But obviously the standard cable is uh, five kilowatts and the thick cable goes up to 100 kilowatts. So you can go mad with the heavy gauge cable within reason. Um, there's been instances when I've done the... Uh, come back here where I've done the wind turbines on Mars and the wind has been so fierce that it ends up blowing apart the circuits uh, because basically wind turbines, they can generate so much more power you're going to easily just blow your circuits. So, Right, I'm going to leave these just chugging away for a little while and then what I'll do, I'm going to just connect these up fairly basic and I'll give you a quick run through of how to wire up the solar panels. So before I put anything actually placed down, I want to just show you how I'm going to lay this out. So I'm going to do a batch writer with the output port pointing upwards. And I'm going to put a batch, uh, not batch reader, just a simple reader. So if I go through logic reader and have that pointing down. So what I'm going to do now is connect up this network here and this network here. Um, to be honest, it could all go that way way straight over but doesn't really make a huge difference at this point there we go so they're all connected in now so the data connections are going to be on this side the power is going to be brought round and brought onto this side of the APC and that can be done with a thinner gauge cable this APC is going to be basically just controlling the solar panel chips nothing else I don't want to complicate the system, shall we say, um, and actually have this being power being drawn into the rest of the network. This cable is going to be brought down, and that's going to then power in uh, feed into this network here. So it's going to be a bit fiddly getting it past our um, furnace, but then again, the furnace is temporary, so I might just do something like that and zigzag around something just to get it into place. So to set this up, what we need to do. Step one, grab the screwdriver out, and we're going to look for the input, and that needs to be set to, uh, let's see if I can find a daylight sensor, and we are looking for the solar angle. Turn that on. Uh, it would help if I put some power into this. Let me just go grab a battery. If I grab the one that's just down here, because you do want to put a larger battery in here, so it runs all the time. And there we go. So now we've got solar angle, and you can see that number, 32.31 point da da da. So on this one, oops, push the wrong button then. So on this one, we want to grab the screwdriver, and we want to say the input is going to be from the logic reader. The output type is going to be solar panel, and we want the vertical. Turn it on, and then now we're going to angle. They're not pointing in the right direction, 
But don't worry, because all we've got to do to get this, this out, and we just simply rotate uh, left. Change that to 90 degrees. You could do a batch writer and just simply set them all that way by just simply having memory set and I find it just easy just to do that as and when it's needed. And there we go. Now we have two solar panels that are tracking the sun and it is as simple as just a simple reader and batch writer. There's no angle stuff calculations which you'll see on the old wiki so completely ignore that. It's kind of redundant now. It's all built into game nice and easy. You do have to get into more complicated angle stuff if you go on beyond Mars. Uh, other, uh, should we say, planets and things like that, it doesn't go straight over at 90 degrees, should we say. You, what you're going to find is it goes kind of like an arc, which would be much more realistic. So you do have to do what's called dual axis uh, tracking. That is, there are scripts dotted around and I've done bits and bobs. Let's just say, it's beyond the scope of the beginning series. You don't need to worry about that. But for just basic solar tracking, logic reader, and a batch writer, and a sensor. And you're good to go. Right, now I'm going to bring this cable down. And by the time I've done that, it's going to be pitch black, so enjoy the darkness, I guess. Now, another thing I forgot to mention is you have to upgrade all the cable in the network to the heavy gauge cable. So you can't just mix and match cables. So if I, say, bung some of this thinner gauge cable here, it'll be fine for now because the sun is now set. But as soon as this network draws more than 5 kilowatts, it will blow. Now this is one of the limitations of the game, it's not very really clever how it worked because in real life basically if you had all this heavy gauge cable here and your load was here and afterwards there was no load, that wouldn't blow the cable that was here, it would just simply work. But because the game basically calculates the network as one continuous length and it doesn't really fully accurate, uh, should we say, calculate the current flow through the cable in different sections, it's just one continuous cable. If you do mix and match your, your cables, you'll find that the thin gauge stuff will blow up, basically. So you kind of have to bear that in mind. So don't mix and match your cables as much as it's tempting to do, because you'll be a kind of gutser very, very quickly. Now, the only problem is I've run out of materials, and I think it was the gold? No, copper I ran out of. So I've got to get some more of that, and I need to also refine some other bits of bobs. So, but this has basically come together mostly. Um, the only thing is now we're going to have a bit of a tough night because I have actually kind of snooked myself. The temptation is to turn this off, and I most likely will do this. Pop this one down here, turn that off, just to save power. Basically shut down everything we don't need for the time being. In the morning, I'm going to have to switch it on. It will then automatically retrack and move itself into position. You can run a small background there if you really want to, but you know that you'll forget to turn it on one time when you're out and about. And when you come back, half the day's gone, solar panels have been put in completely the wrong direction, and you would have lost a lot of time and a lot of power. There are scripts that you can get that will you can put in and program in that will actually reset them every night to the morning position and then if the battery dies it doesn't matter because it will just automatically pick up as soon as it gets any sunshine. This system doesn't do that so yeah you kind of have to bear that in mind. It's not a very intelligent, it's just simply reading a number. It's not working out when the zone's below or above the horizon so you kind of have to bear that in mind a little bit unfortunately so. There we go, the last two sections of the heavy gauge cable are now in. So the next job now is to put in a station battery. Now station batteries ideally want to be in between the solar panels and the rest of the base power. So there's APCL to be moved over. The arc furnace most likely will get ripped out now, it's not really needed. Might even just put it here temporarily, I'll see how it goes. But this will be moved out and I'll probably have the batteries just placed in here somewhere. So they're just basically a middle ground between the two. Now, the batteries, let me just turn this on again. They are fairly expensive. So the kit battery requires a fair amount of gold, a fair amount of copper, and a fair amount of steel. So these aren't going to be really cheap. You will have to kind of balance, oh, should we say, grind a little bit to get the materials up to it, but it is definitely worth it because these batteries are necess necessary just to make it through the night now. 
So I need to get myself some more gold. I don't think I've got any on me, no. So I'm going to have to do another nighttime digging session, which is great fun and joys to say the least. So hopefully I can vaguely remember where my gold was. That wasn't too bad of a trip. It was just over there. Luckily the gold. I might even see it still glinting. Literally as soon as I stopped recording, I was like, oh, there's the gold. <laughs> so used to having to go Mars. Right, that built really quickly. Might as well have two of them then, I guess. They are very quick to build. So they have to have an in and an out. And you'll see the little arrows again. So I'll pop it about there, maybe. I do want to get two in there, and I think I can if I just remove those vents and things. That's all got to come out, so it get moved over this way. So I'll probably go here. That's one. And then this has all got to come out, so... Uh, how much is power? 87% because I just got the low power alarm. Might as well have it. Chuck that in there. I'll plop that down here. And I'll put the other one there for the time being. So we've got to now rip out all the stuff we basically placed the other day. And this is kind of how it goes with the early game. You're going to do a lot of this just picking up, moving stuff around, constantly just shimmying stuff. And it makes sense uh, to a point. Uh, you will start to see kind of a pattern of the madness of this game where you're just constantly just cutting stuff up and then have to put it back down again. And it is just the constant shimmy. Constantly just shimmying stuff around, making space for everything. So you can actually put down stuff for your bigger projects later on. This arc furnace is going to have to come out as well. I got a funny feeling that's this. Nope, hand drill. I nearly guessed right first time. There we go. I'll plonk it down there for the time being. Uh, this is all going to be moved over. Probably a good idea to do that now before I do anything else. There we go. The gas pressure will be getting pushed in. So there is this pipe is full of gas from the furnace. And you'll see that the pressure at the moment is at 2.8. If I take out a section, that is now shot up to 3. When the game doesn't delete the gases, it pushes it back. Now, you must bear that in mind. If you start taking it apart from that end and you work your way along, by the time you get to the end of that pipe, that bit of pipe in the end will probably be at 20 megapascals. Bearing in mind, the pipes are only rated for, I say, 10 megapascals. I normally go, go past 8 because I'm just scared about things exploding, but 10, I think, is the absolute limit. So bear that in mind, when you're taking apart pipes, if you take it apart from the other end and you sort of push the gas along, it will just blow the part, the pipe in front of you and probably kill you in the process. So always go from the outwards in. So it just push the gas back into a, uh, some sort of vessel that can take the pressure or just into a bigger space. So you're not just condensing that gas down to a very tight space where and then you're just blowing up in your face. So let's grab that other battery, which is here. And this one can go here actually, because the connection is already there. And we must also turn these switches on. It's a bit odd you have to turn batteries on, but hey ho. And I'm going to grab this bit of cable. Uh, actually, no, I'm not going to do that because that will be bad. Um, saying that, mm, that'll be fine. The APC doesn't really need to do anything at this point in time. It should really have an APC there, but for the starting off, I'm not going to worry too much. We're not drawing enough power to be a problem, plus we don't really need to worry about separating the networks out. I do need, though, a little bit more power, um, which at the moment we haven't got any because these are batteries are dead. So we'll get to the coal generator. Now, this is where it gets a little bit interesting. The coal generator, I believe, doesn't help enough to oversaturate system but we'll soon find out because I think it's only five or fifty uh, kilowatts yeah I think I should be fine so because the cable is rated 100 one advantage as well of doing it this way is you are pushing all the power or capturing all the power from that generator we are so we're not actually wasting any energy now by having it go into the APC we were actually losing power so this is now getting so much more juice going into this battery um, and we're actually capturing everything that's coming off this coal generator or the solid generator. So this battery is actually going very, very quick. Now we should be able to turn this on and hopefully print off just another bit heavy cable so we can get the other battery going. Yep, that's beautiful. So we can get this one hooked in here. And then that is it. We have got a very 
should we say, a stable base now for the power. We haven't got to worry about messing around with anything too complicated. We're simply just running these systems fairly simple. There we go. So that is now going to run like that. I might as well just leave this just to chew through all the coal. Um, I don't know if I can read off the stats. No, you can't really read it off, but you can with the configuration things and other things, but hey, I won't worry too much about that. Right, so that is now fully char uh, charging up those batteries with all the energy. I say fully charging. All the energy is being dumped into those uh, batteries. So we should be good to go. The next thing we will need to put down, actually, is a battery charger. Because without an APC, we don't have a battery charger. And it would be a good idea to have that just ticking along, keeping some batteries topped up. There we go. One battery charger. And then I'm going to pop that in there to be topping up. So they're now just dumping their charge into this. This is slower than APC, um, but at the same time it's a bit more controlled. So you can plonk some batteries in there and they'll just keep them topped up all the time. So we're in a very, very good spot now. Very, very good spot. Next thing I'll do is reinstate that vent. If I can squeeze past, there we go. So if I pop in somewhere, where did it go? There it is. I was like, oh, somewhere I've put my vent down. So we reinstate the vent here. There we go. One vent reinstated. Absolutely perfect. So that's it. We've got the power situation now sorted. We've got some tracking sat uh, satellites. We have some tracking solar panels now in place. Uh, we need to swap out the batteries a little bit, actually, because this one does need to be up there on that circuit. The coal generator does have the added advantage of how we hooked it in. If the... Um, system struggles in the morning say that battery is dead we can just chuck more coal in there i might also actually do a little clever trick where i'm going to take this off and make this into effectively a kind of backup system so if the event that we have a power failure basically something happens to solar panels something gets ballsed up you can put on here a solar panel facing east and then as soon as that sun comes up, the first thing you're going to do is hit that APC and start charging it. That will then just trickle enough into these chips and the, the act, it will activate the solar panel tracking code and they'll kick in and then the full charge will kick in. So what I'm going to do is bung a wire in there. And again, it has to be heavy gauge cable. Can't use the cheap stuff. So I'm going to bring that round and just simply tack it into there. So I'm going to have to make a bit more heavy gauge cable. But this is then basically kind of idiot proof slash will makes a big cock up mistake proofing thing so and this just then means I ain't got to worry about it and it gives you a bit more reliability to your system so and, and plus it makes use of these uh, basic solar panels that frankly you never use there we go a kind of backup measure so I just ran the heavy gauge cable straight into the rest of the network that is on the generation side so push comes to shove Worst case scenario, it will just trickle charge it, hopefully, just to kick these in. So I'm hoping that is the case anyway. These aren't correctly feeding into a battery, so they might just gobble up all the power before the APC kicks in. But I think APCs tend to have a priority over the rest of the network. Um, don't quote me on it, because, you know, like a lot of things I do in this game, I'm pretty much winging it. <laughs> so anyway, that should now work. And I think if I turn these solar trackers on, those solar panels should now flip over because the sun using the earth as a guide is over this way down here somewhere so it's soon going to be the morning of day three even though it's day two in game so technically today is day three because we start on day zero it's confusing the day number and stuff well on the morning of technically day three we've got the solar panels up battery is all there so i think today will be a good day to start the next load jobs now, it's a bit of a crossroads what we do next. I most likely will start doing the greenhouse and food production and basic things like that. So, I'll catch you all then. Bye for now.